Greetings and welcome to this CG cookie tutorial. My name is Kent Trammell and I want to share a technique that I use a lot to make my modeling workflow a little less destructive. It involves Blender's shape key system and using it more like a layer system, kind of like in Photoshop or GIMP. But first I want to clarify where this method is most useful and why you might want to use it. When I worked at a studio in the modeling department, finishing the mesh didn't mean the model was finished. The creative authorities would frequently request model tweaks, sometimes before and a lot of times after the model was passed down the pipe. If the tweaks were requested after the texture artist did their thing, I had the responsibility to maintain the vert count for the sake of UVs. So these kinds of tweaks rarely required topological changes, but were things like lengthen the arms by 25%, make the torso wider, or neutralize the face a little bit more. These kinds of tweaks are shape only changes, which can be added and layered as shape keys in Blender. A huge benefit here is the power of before and after. Showing a tweak before and after to your creative authority is a tremendous asset to either confirm or debunk the tweak. I lost count how many times they saw the requested tweak compared to the old version and chose the old version. Making these shape changes with shape keys makes your workflow non-destructive and will save both time and frustration. And this method isn't only valuable in a client relationship, but also with colleagues online who offer critiques and in your personal work, emphasizing again the power of before and after can really hone your creative decision making. But please note that shape keys are topology dependent. Even though Blender's system is surprisingly robust and can sometimes accept topological changes like adding an edge loop, I want to warn you of the danger of changing the vert count or topology if you have shape keys that you want to maintain because there's a good chance those will be messed up. All right, with that said, let's jump into Blender and see some examples. Here I have the um, updated Baker model that I made recently for the site. And um, creating this guy is actually what inspired this tutorial because I finished the model, the topology of the model, long before uh, me, Jonathan, Wes, and Tim um, approved the final design. So we went through several passes of of making changes to the shape, like uh, widening the legs or, or making the space between the legs bigger or uh, shortening the arms, making the arms longer, making the head wider, so on and so forth until we came to a final design. So because I wasn't changing the topology, it was very easy to make these changes with shape keys. So I'm going to kind of relive what that workflow was like. Let's say I got a note that was like, let's, let's try the head uh, being, uh, let's say 10% taller. So first thing I would do is um, create two shape keys one basis and then key one. I would move key one all the way up to a value of one. Jump into edit mode, hit uh, three and five to go into the orthographic side view. And uh, go to face mode, bring up my circle select and I want to select uh, the whole head here. Then I can subtract a few of those uh, edge loops just to give me the top of the head. And now making sure that key one is active, uh, we want it at 10% taller so I can uh, with my pivot at the medium point hit S, Z, and 1.1 will make it exactly 10% taller. Very cool. So I would name this, you know, fix head. And uh, we can turn that on and off to see the before and after. Let's say another note was to uh, straighten out the arm. Let's say this uh, bend was a little too much and shorten the arm a little bit. So again, I would jump into, well, before I jump into edit mode, let me make sure to add my next shape key because I like to isolate the tweaks uh, based on the limbs. That way, if you know I like this arm tweak, but want to get rid of head tweak, I can easily just turn the head off and uh, keep the arm change. But anyway, with shape key two added, I'll jump back into edit mode. And let's just uh, select uh, the majority of the arm. And then uh, edge mode, I'll just define um, where I want this joint to be by selecting that edge loop. Shift S, cursor to selected. And I almost always forget to turn on screencast keys. So there we go. Hopefully you can see it down there. The new uh, overlay tool panels kind of uh, mess that up. But anyway, okay, so with my um, cursor centered to the middle of the arm where the arm joint would be, I can control Z back to regain my um, former selection. And then we wanted this to be um, a little bit shorter. So let me uh, turn, make my pivot point the 3D cursor and uh, turn on uh, proportional editing. Hit S to scale that up. Just um, kind of adjust my fall off to be a little smoother and scale that up, you know, whatever. All right, now I want to straighten out the arm. So I will make my selection, then uh, center my uh, cursor again, shift S cursor to selected. 
undo to get my selection back, shrink my selection one more time for the sake of the fall off, and then uh, let's, let's rotate that arm to be a little straighter. All right, so we've got uh, a couple beautiful tweaks made, but you will notice that I only made the tweak to the left side. But in the end, I want this to be on both arms. So in the past, and I think 2.58 was the last version that um, allowed for the uh, proportional editing to be mirrored. Um, in my tool panel in edit mode, we can see that with proportional editing enabled, the mesh options X mirror is disabled and is grayed out. If I disable proportional editing, X mirror comes back. Personally, I would kind of like to see this return, but um, I understand that there is some problems. Perhaps it caused more problems than it solved. But anyway, I'm a huge fan of proportional editing, so anytime I'm using that, it will not be mirrored. But the shape key system offers a nice little workaround. So uh, because I isolated the uh, tweak um, in this shape key number two, I can mirror just that specific shape key over. And the way I'm going to do this is with the down arrow, uh, which offers us more options. And one of the operators is new shape from mix. So I'm going to click that and notice that both shape keys are um, enabled when I click that button. And what this does is um, make the influence from both shape keys uh, and it combines it into one shape key. So that's what that button does, but I only want to um, really duplicate shape key number two. So I'm going to only leave that one turned on and then press that same button, new shape from mix. This essentially will duplicate the shape key. If I turn it on by itself, we can see that the um, effect is the same as if on shape key two, if I just changed uh, the range, the max range to two and just crank that up to two, it's the exact same effect. So I'll undo that and then select shape key three, turn it up to one, and then back in that down arrow, which offers us more options, there's another one called mirror shape key. So now when I click that, you can see that the um, tweak that I made to the left arm is now propagated over to the right arm. Then with both of them enabled, I can again hit new shape from mix. And this leaves me with the tweaks um, made only to the arms, but made symmetrically to both arms. And now when I would review this with the uh, other CG Cookie crew members, we could very quickly um, see, hey, this is what the head looked like before. And uh, this is what it looks like 10% uh, taller, like you asked, which one do you like better? And it's very easy to make that decision right here because I can, with one click, you know, see that difference. And same with the arms. And, you know, they're like, oh, I like the head, but I don't like the arm changes. Easy enough. I maintained how they looked before. So that's kind of a general use of uh, what I mean by non-destructive modeling. But we also have the ability to do some other things uh, with the shape key system. I'm going to jump over to layer two for my second example, which is uh, involving this GIF box. So recently I um, did a project where I had to render and composite a photoreal GIF box onto a live action plate. And the camera was right up in front of uh, this, this box, so it had to be photorealistic, really close and, and look really good. But it wasn't just a box, it was wrapped in GIF paper. So you can see that up here, I've sculpted some of that, uh, you know, subtle wrinkling and stuff that you get uh, when you wrap a present. But if I remove the top and uh, rotate it uh, in Y 180 degrees, uh, we can see that the inside of the box was not wrapped. So that just looked like a normal cardboard box, straight faces and everything. But this is all one mesh. So what I had to do was sculpt the outside and leave the inside untouched. Now I say sculpting because I did use the sculpt tools, but I'm not using dynamic topology and I'm not using a multi-resolution modifier. Uh, the most efficient way for me to do this was uh, simply to um, subdivide it a couple times, apply that subdivision, leaving me with this somewhat dense mesh. Um, it's just dense enough to give me the detail I need to sculpt in those subtle wrinkles in the wrapping paper. And the sculpting tools can work with just geometry, um, not needing a multi-resolution or dynamic topology. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. And so you might be thinking that um, I can mask off the inside masking. Uh, but if I jump into sculpt mode and press M to bring up my sculpt masking brush, and uh, you can see that as I click and draw a stroke, we're not seeing any masking happening. Now, I think this is actually a bug because it is actually laying down some masking strokes, but it's just not displaying. So that's really not useful here. I'm going to hit Alt M just to make sure I clear that little stroke that I made because that'll mess me up if I don't do that. 
And besides, I don't really want to mask off or try to mask off by hand these straight edges and paint all the way down in all these cracks, hoping that I get every single vertice. There's a much easier way to mask off the inside and only sculpt on the outside, and that's done with uh, vertex groups and shape keys. So I'll jump out uh, of sculpt mode back into object mode. Um, then uh, in my object data panel, I'm going to create a vertex group. I'm going to call this I INFL. That's just my abbreviation for influence. Now I will tab into edit mode, uh, go to face selection and select these faces here. So what I'm going to do is select the faces that I do not want to be influenced, that I do not want to be affected by my uh, sculpting manipulation. And that's the inside of my box. So I'm going to grow the selection now, hold it down until um, it peaks over the edge right about now and then um, I'm going to clean up my selection get rid of these peaks like this so uh, it becomes um, an edge loop selection like now then I can shrink that selection down to be um, just the inside of the box cool so that's what I don't want to be affected but I've named my vertex group influence so I want what will be affected so I can in my viewport control I to invert the selection and then assign my selection to the vertex group with a weight of one so I can assign that now and just to check it, I will hit A to deselect everything and then click the select button over here in the vertex group uh, drop down. We can see that that's uh, how we want it. Very cool. Now I will uh, manipulate the mesh in a shape key. So let's click that plus button twice, make the uh, value one for key one. And then below uh, we have a little option under the blend label where we can select our vertex group. So I will click it and select our influence group. And this means that the only vertices that will be affected by this shape key um, must be a part of this group. So now let's jump into sculpt mode. I'm going to switch over to my pin and uh, let's make some strokes here to our box. And, you know, let's just say that these are some wrinkles for the wrapping paper. And, you know, I'm just kind of going to town. But if I go to the inside, we can see that it is completely unaffected. But now if I remove the influence group over here, click that X button, we can see that um, we do have changes on the inside because the sculpt stroke kind of, I have it set up by default to go through all of the meshes. We can try to um, turn on front faces only, but I don't really like this option. It's it, it's funky how it works, I guess. Like right now you can see that I'm, I'm laying down strokes on this box, but absolutely nothing is happening. And so we get it on this side, you know, and it, it's making strokes. It's not affecting the inside, but then, you know, a stroke has no effect over here on this side. So I don't really like that option. I find it pretty finicky. So I'm going to turn that off and uh, reselect the influence group again. That way um, the inside faces are completely unaffected by the strokes that I've made on the outside. So hopefully with this example, you can see how useful it can be to mask with uh, vertex groups and shape keys. I don't only use this method. I certainly use sculpt masking um, when it's uh, appropriate, but, but this method is very useful in certain situations like this one. Um, I have one more example. I'm going to switch to object mode, then go to layer three. And uh, in this example, I'm going to be using the Baker mesh again to illustrate a very specific example that stems again from my experience at the studio, um, where it was common practice when we would deliver a finished character model to be submitted to the pipeline. Out of courtesy for the texture department, we would create some additional shapes, like here we have the mouth open and eyes closed shapes. And this makes it easier on them to be able to paint the inside of the mouth and the outside of the eyelids. And if you ever use Blender in a pipeline that's not a Blender pipeline, uh, like in my case, it was a Maya centric pipeline. Um, that's why I had to break out these shapes separately because uh, Maya needs uh, separate blend shapes when I export out of Blender and import into Maya. So that's kind of setting up the situation. We've got a finished model that's been passed through the pipe. It's been UV'd, it's been textured, rigging has done its thing. Let's say it's even an animation. Uh, but the director comes back and he's like, hey, I want this guy to be a little, a little fatter, a little chunkier, have some more meat on his bones because you know, in animation, he's looking too skinny. So we need to change it all the way back in the model. This kind of request isn't as uncommon as you know you might hope as a modeler. 
So I know that I can make the bloating uh, changes to this main mesh, but I also don't want to lose uh, the work that I put into opening the mouth and closing the eyelids. I want the changes that I make here to propagate over to these other shapes. So uh, I'm going to set that up right now. Let me remove these shapes um, from the earlier example. And first thing I'm going to do is select these additional shapes and then select my main mesh last, leaving it the active object. Over here in my additional shape key options, I'm going to click join as shapes. And then I can just remove these guys. And uh, let's uh, turn these shapes on. So this is uh, eyes closed. Let me rename them so it makes it easier to understand what I'm doing. Eyes closed. Perhaps I should increase the size of the text over here. So this is the eyes closed shape, leaving the mouth open shape on the bottom. Cool. So if I crank that up to one, um, we can see that those uh, shapes are added uh, really as layers uh, in this shape key system. Now I'm ready to make the actual uh, tweak that was requested to kind of bloat this guy up. So I can add a new shape key and I'll just go ahead and move it to the top or after the basis. And let's name this fixer. Again, just to stay organized and I am struggling with my typing. Okay, cool. So that is uh, cranked up to level one. And then I'll jump into my uh, sculpt mode and grab the inflate brush. Also turn on, let's see, symmetry in the X axis. And now let's just bloat this guy up. This is, um, you know, making the actual change that you requested and he wants just some more meat on his bones. So it's very uh, easily done with the inflate brush. Kind of give him a bit of a belly or something like that. Cool. So that shape is now added and I can show him that and he's like, awesome. That's great. You know, uh, approved. Now uh, with the fixer shape working with the additional shapes that I already have created, um, I can now propagate the um, bloated fixer down to the other additional shapes. I'm going to duplicate this mesh, move it in the X direction, duplicate it one more time, do the same thing. And now uh, this shape uh, is going to be my mouth open. So I need to remove the eye shape. Let's just turn that off. And then uh, in the additional options, new shape from mix. Now I want to apply the shape key as the basis shape. The way I can do that is remove all the shape keys, making sure to delete key four last. So I'll select mouth open, hit minus, 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 delete the basis, and then this becomes my new basis. And then I can delete that. The normals go a little weird initially. I can just tab into edit mode, tab back out, and there we go. We have the mouth open shape with uh, the bloated shape key applied to it and propagated down. So I'll do the same thing over here, or not the same thing, but getting rid of the mouth open, just leaving the eyes closed, uh, new shape from mix, delete all the others, first and then uh, key for last tabbing in edit mode to refresh the normals and, um, and then on my main mesh over here I, I want to remove everything except the fixer and remove that last and there we go when I um, check this by uh, joining as shape keys we can see that um, those sh keys are working properly and the bloated uh, tweak that I made has been propagated all the way down the line. If this doesn't seem completely relevant to you, I understand. I just wanted to include this example because I used it all the time uh, at the studio, sometimes even um, propagating a change to like a hundred different blend shapes when I was doing a facial set. And this workaround saved me a ton of time. So that's why I wanted to include it and, and show you what can be done um, with the shape key system in Blender which I hope you can see by now uh, is extremely useful and can really lend itself to a, a more non-destructive way to model and to save your work and, and avoid frustration. Uh, that's going to be all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.